Hello, I'm Jay Buckley, Technical Training Manager at Fram Filters. Welcome to the second video for the 2011 Fram Challenge. This video will focus on how we engineer and test oil filters. We're going to take you on a bit of a tour of our test lab, a place we call the Fram Proving Grounds. Our chief engineer, Gary Bilski, will take you through the testing we do to ensure our oil filters perform their best. Let's start by looking at how we test oil filters, both for dirt trapping ability and robust build strength. As you may remember from the first video, the dirt trapping ability is referred to as efficiency and capacity. Efficiency is really a measure of how good the filter is. It measures the filter's ability to remove dirt the very first time oil goes through it. When we talk about capacity, we mean exactly how many grams of dirt a filter can trap and hold before it's full and in bypass. This capacity must be carefully matched to the length of the oil change interval. Many automakers agree that dirt in the 10 to 20 micron range is most harmful to engine bearings. So we use scientifically calibrated dirt, which means that we use dirt particles for testing that are carefully sorted to include particles of that size. But how big is a micron? Well, a human hair is 40 to 80 microns in diameter, so a 10 to 20 micron particle is extremely small. At Fram, we use the ISO 4548-12 oil filter test. It is the most comprehensive test for oil filters. Whenever you see claims on a filter box from any manufacturer, always check the fine print to see if they followed the ISO test. You can find out more about this test at the Filter Manufacturers Council website. Now, let's head to the testing lab and have Gary show us the efficiency and capacity test. In the dirt test, we simulate dirt and debris in the engine and find out how much of that dirt the Fram filter can trap. It really simulates what's going on in, on your uh, oil loop system in the engine. Typically in your engine, you're gonna get dirt going in through your air filter a little bit into the combustion chamber, getting into your oil stream. Also, you may have a little bit of wear particles in your engine that gets in. And that is a continuous injection of dirt. And this test is simulating just that. It takes oil from a main sump that's a slurry, slowly injecting it into the main flow, and then it goes through the engine. You're putting a controlled amount of dirt into the test stand and the oil circulating and it's uh, going through the filter. Now upstream and downstream of the filter, we can actually measure the particle sizes. Optical particle counters analyze the oil for 50 seconds every minute of the test. These optical particle counters will measure how many particles there are in the oil. Uh, let's say uh, upstream there's 10 particles, downstream there's one particle. Quick math, it's 90% efficient. The test is rigorous. The filter is asked to perform at levels far beyond real-world conditions, all to ensure Fram exceeds every requirement toward engine protection. Next up are the durability tests. The first one is for burst strength. When you start a cold engine, you can experience spikes in oil pressure. The filter has to be robust enough to withstand these pressure spikes. As Gary will show you, we also run a test called the burst test. The procedure is simple. We mount a filter on a stand and increase the oil pressure going through it until it fails. Let's see how it's done. The burst test measures the integrity of a filter on extremely high pressure conditions. The typical operating you know, pressure on an engine when, the, when it's warmed up is only maybe 60 PSI, 40 to 60 PSI. When we run the test, we want to see pressures 200 or 300 PSI, depending on you know, what, what engine it may be on. If the filter can withstand those levels in the lab, performance in the real world may seem easy. But some environmental situations could greatly challenge the filter. When you start up your engine on a cold day, the oil is pretty viscous. So the engine is trying to pump this cold oil through the engine and through the filter and the pressure can build up pretty significantly and pretty quickly. When you turn the key, the filter goes to work in an instant. That instant startup can go from zero to maybe uh, 100, 125 PSI instantaneously. So the filter has to withstand that. That sudden surge is simulated in the lab by adding pressure to the filter. Pressure's starting to build at 100 PSI. See the uh, flute's starting to deform, it's around 200 PSI. You can just start seeing the filter move a little away from the filter base. It's about 300, it's starting to move quite a bit now. You'll see that gasket blow out. Just a second, here it goes, here it goes. Again, and again, 
and again. The burst test proves that Fram filters may withstand more than twice the pressure levels of even extreme conditions. We also do a second test for structural integrity. Let's face it, roads today can be pretty poor with lots of bumps and vibration. There's also a lot of vibration from the drivetrain itself. At the Fram Noise Vibration and Harshness Lab, we also do a long duration vibration test to make sure our filters meet this challenge. We call it the Hell Test. Let's take a look. The Hell Test, housed within Fram's Vibration Lab. It's not an everyday test, and good thing because it's not a friendly place for a filter. The lab goes beyond the daily testing to focus on problem solving and even further innovation. If you, uh, you know, see an engine running, it's gonna, have, it's gonna be shaken. And in different conditions, it can shake pretty hard. You, know, you start accelerating hard and jackrabbit starts. You can get some severe shocks. So the vibration part of the durability test is to assure that you know, you're not gonna get a failure on the engine with a filter under different conditions of vibration. Vibration cycles are typically run from 10 to 250 hertz. But the test doesn't stop there. Fram engineers can add extreme temperatures from 60 below to as high as 300 degrees. All to help closely simulate a variety of real world conditions. We're going to uh, simulate what this engine will see when someone goes from a start position on the engine, uh, hits the gas and gets up to 30 miles an hour, uh, then driving down the road for a short amount of time backing down to a stop sign or, and then taking off again. So the engine will typically see during that cycle possibly going in vibration from 10 to 250 hertz and possibly up to a maximum of 6G loading maybe on a, a hard acceleration where the engine will shake pretty violently. Other simulations can be even more taxing to the filter. We're simulating here like a driver going down a rough road, it might be in the winter time, a lot of potholes. So it's uh, really hitting a lot. A lot of displacement, uh, you know, the suspension is getting severely shaken and the whole engine compartment is shaking. Pretty good stress on the filter. Really what we're trying to find here is does the filter leak? Uh, does the filter back off? Uh, and potentially could fall off and, and, and lose oil pressure. The harsh conditions of cold, heat, pressure, vibration. Again, Fram not just withstands, but passes the test. There are other tests we do to make sure all the parts inside the filter can withstand the rigor of both pressure and hot oil. In this next test, Gary will show us how we test the oil filter bypass valve for performance and durability. Remember, this is the valve inside the filter that must open to provide oil pressure when the oil is too thick to flow through the filter or if the filter becomes restricted. Let's see Gary test the valve. The valve test is a torturous test stand where the focus is on just one component of the oil filter, the relief valve. When you start up an engine, uh, you have, uh, obviously it might be a cold day or something, the oil is fairly viscous. You, know, you want the oil, obviously, to go through the filter media. Well, if it's too viscous, the pressure can build up across the filter media. And the relief valve allows the oil to bypass the filter media and go through the valve and to the engine. The unique Fram relief valve uses high quality materials that can easily brave harsh engine conditions. It has uh, a, a, a nylon, a glass reinforced nylon poppet and a steel uh, coil spring. So the coil spring is not affected by temperature. The glass filled nylon is good to extreme temperatures up to about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's very reliable. Reliability is what it's all about. That's why when developing and refining the relief valve, Fram engineers created a harsh test. Typically the valve opens in the life of a vehicle uh, 25, 30,000 times, let's say for startups during the course of an oil change. But that wasn't good enough. 25,000 maybe a standard, we'll do a million cycles. We're gonna prove it out to an extreme. That extreme includes adding maximum opening pressure, heating the oil to 300 degrees, and running the test for some 100 hours, resulting in the valve opening and closing one million times per test cycle. Another test we do in the hot oil lab tests the integrity of the media cartridge and the end cap. In this test, we push 30 weight motor oil at 275 degrees Fahrenheit through the oil filter at the rate of three gallons per minute for 24 hours or longer. Let's see how the test works. We're standing in front of the hot oil flow stand. Uh, this stand is used to measure the durability of all the components in the filter. 
We mounted the filter to an adapter to simulate uh, it mounted in an engine, and we don't want to disturb it uh, after the test is completed so that we can do a, a cold leakage test. And we will cycle the test, run it for the uh, 24 hours, 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that we've completed the uh, hot oil test, and we've taken those filters, put them onto the anti-drain stand, the filter passed the anti-drain testing, we're going to cut it open, see what the inside looks like. Let's take a look, cut this can open, take the filter body off, we'll take this as the uh, relief valve. Now we look at the, uh, the filter cartridge, perfectly intact. We got to look at the filter media, it remains very flexible. All the plastisol still sealed well. Obviously, we got the nice fiber end disc here, very good bond to the filter media and to the end disc with the plastisol. Integrity is great in this. Now, these have been in the, on the test. This was a 24 hour test, 275 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, the, uh, also the anti drain still remains flexible. That's why I obviously passed the anti drain test. Now, now we're going to take a look at a filter that was on the, uh, the hot oil flow stand for over 200 hours and see what it looks like inside. So I've cut it open. And we'll take the filter body off. Well, look, obviously the oil, you can see from the, uh, the relief valve here, has got quite a bit of contaminants in here from the coking of the oil. Obviously a pretty severe test. You wouldn't want to leave your filter on that long in the vehicle. Uh, but if you look at the cartridge, still, again, perfectly intact. Look at the filter media, after 200 hours, still very pliable, no issues at all. You look at the end disks, they still remain pliable. The plastic solid adhesive is still bonded well to the filter media and to the end disks. So we have really good integrity on here. So this was no problem passing all the other tests. Obviously, you take a look at the anti-drain back valve itself. This is a nitro valve, you know, much stiffer, you know, than the, uh, the one we had at 24 hours. Obviously, after 200 hours, the nitro is, uh, is going to take more, uh, a little bit more beating than the uh, than 24 hours. You can even see from the uh, from the the bottom of the uh, tapping plate, a lot of contaminants. And this actually this is from the oil. That's what's going to happen in your engine too. If you leave your uh, obviously your oil, you don't change it often enough. It's a lot of coking from that hot oil for 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 200 hours. It's quite serious, and you get some carbonation from that oil coking. As you've seen, the oil filters we sell are built and tested for all conditions. We go well beyond what any vehicle will ever experience and really put them to the test. Thank you for completing video two of the 2011 Fram Challenge. We hope you enjoyed your tour of the Fram Proving Grounds and that you've gained some good insights into how oil filters are engineered and tested. Thank you for your time.